Happy New Year of 2015. What an amazing year this is going to be for you and your family. Happy New Year of 2015. 2014 has come and it's now gone. We might look back upon 2014 and we may remember wondrous things and just great and glorious things happen. But conversely, we could look back on 2014 and see unfulfilled visions and dreams. But here we are at the beginning of 2015, a brand new year, and I believe it an exciting year. It may hold the good, it may hold the bad, and it may hold the ugly which I'm sure it will to some degree, but it's still an exciting time. From my earthly vantage point, things don't look encouraging at all. But from my spiritual vantage point, this could be the most wonderful, exciting year that we have ever experienced. I heard a mar marvelous message this past week, and I just felt like the Lord would have me ch share it with you. It was so encouraging to me and this may be just for me today, but it is an encouraging word. God sent a message through Haggai to uh, Zerubbabel and Jeshua, the son of the high priest. They'd come through very troubling times and the tri tri temple had fallen down. It was all broken down and decayed and they had started some work on it, but they were discouraged. Their dreams, their hopes, their visions seemingly had fallen with the temple. But the message began from God with a question. Does anyone remember this house, this temple, in its former splendor? Then in comparison, how does it look to you now? It must seem like nothing at all. I can look back and I can see the church in a former splendor. I can see the church when there was a move of the Holy Spirit throughout America and many lost people came to the Lord. Many great healings, the healing revival that came through and just many marvelous things. I can look back at the splendor of that. I can also look back at the splendor of what America has been. And it seems today that so much has crumbled. It seems that uh, many of the dreams and many of the visions have vanished. And you may have seen the former splendor, and you may have dreamed the dream. But now the Lord says, be strong, Zerubbabel. Be strong, Jeshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people still left in the land. We're still left in the land, aren't we? And then God says, now get to work. Get back to what you were doing before all this happened. Get back to that for which you have been believing. For I am with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. My spirit remains among you, just as I promised you when you came out of Egypt. So do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, children of God, regardless of what you see coming in your path. Be strong, be courageous, for the Lord of heaven's armies has spoken. And by the way, this is the New Living Translation of Haggai 2. For this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. In just a little while, I will again shake the heavens and the earth, the oceans and the dry land. I will shake all the nations. But listen, and the treasures of all the nations will be brought to this temple. The wealth of the Gentiles will be brought to the people of God. And that is a confirming word in Isaiah 60. Who now is the temple of God? Are we not now known as the temple of the Lord Jesus Christ if we know him as our savior? God continues, I will fill this place 
with glory, says the Lord of heaven's armies. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of heaven's armies. The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory, says the Lord of heaven's armies. And in this place, what place are you in today? The Lord of heaven's armies says, in this place, I will bring peace. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, have spoken it. God went on to speak in the 18th and 19th verses of Haggai 2. Think about the 18th day of December, the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Think carefully. I am giving you a promise now, while the seed is still in the barn. You have not yet harvested your grain and your grapevines, your fig trees, your pomegranates, and your olive trees have not yet produced their crop. Your dreams and your visions have not yet been seen. They are still in the barn. You haven't seen the harvest yet that perhaps you've been waiting for years to experience. But the Lord of heaven's armies has spoken. But from this day onward, from this day onward, I will bless you. While your seed is still in the barn, your unanswered prayers, your unanswered desires, and your unanswered dreams are still in the barn, but the Lord of heaven's army says, from this day onward, I will bless you. You already have the promise, even though you can't see the fruit yet. May I tell you that when the Lord of heaven's army speaks, it is not like some that we hear today. Some we hear today, every word that comes out of their mouth seems to be a lie. But when the Lord of heaven's army speaks, you can take it to the bank. May I encourage you this first day of 2015 to forget those things which are behind, forgetting those things of yesterday, the good, the bad, the ugly, forget those things and let us turn with full anticipation, looking ahead and armed with the words of the Lord of heaven's armies. Out of these verses, here's what I got. Number one, be strong. Number two, get back to work. Get back to what you were doing when you were full of faith and full of vigor and believing the word of God. Number three, my spirit, God's spirit, remains among us. Number four, for he tells us, I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Number five, so do not be afraid. Number six, the treasures of all the nations will be brought in. Number seven, I will fill this place, this place with glory. The future glory of this temple will be greater than its past glory. Number nine, in this place, I will bring peace. Number 10, I am giving you a promise now while the seed is still in the barn. And number 11, from this day onward, I will bless you. What glorious promises we have from the Lord of heaven's armies. I believe we can square our shoulders and I believe we can move into 2015 with the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God and move in boldness to accomplish and to see that which we have not seen yet come into fruition. There is an excitement regarding 2015. This could be the year of the Lord's return to gather all of his people. 
I've heard all my life Jesus is coming soon. But this year, at the beginning of 2015, there are more signs pointing to his soon coming that we've ever heard. I'm hearing people everywhere talking about Jesus is coming soon. It could be this year. And what a glorious day that will be. No one is too bad or too far gone to come to the Lord Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ, he loves you so much and he desires for your fellowship so much that he will wash away every one of your sins and he will cast them into the sea. He has chosen to forget our sins. Once we come to Jesus Christ, all the sins we have ever committed are not written on a chalkboard somewhere. They're not going to be exposed again ever. They are in God's forgetfulness. He has chosen to never, ever remember them again. If I came to the Lord today and I said, oh, but Lord, I'm feeling so sorry about so and so and so and so that I did back so and so, he would say, I don't know what you're talking about. That's good news, folks. That's why Jesus, that's what he does when he loves us so much. And he came to this earth to receive us as his brothers and his sisters, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. It's so simple and it's so easy to come to him. The word tells us that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, that is preached many times. If we will come and we will confess all of our sins and, and, and we will humble ourselves, but our humbling of ourselves is coming and confessing that Jesus Christ is now Lord of our lives. I'm no longer Lord. I'm no longer in charge of my life. I receive Jesus Christ as Lord. That's the humbling of yourself. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe in your heart. God has raised him from the dead and he's seated at the right hand of God the Father today. I want to tell you the joy of the Lord will fill your heart and your life. And the rest of that is you will be saved. Praise God. I just want you to know today, Jesus loves you so very much. If you need healing, Jesus is the healer. If you need uh, prosperity, Jesus is our provider. He's promised us to look better than the birds of the field. We can be fed better. We can look better. We can have uh, the greatest things because he loves us so much. You know what? I love my children and my grandchildren so much. There's not one thing I wouldn't do for them if it were in my ability to do it. And sometimes I've even gone outside of my ability to do it because I love them. But Jesus loves you more and loves my children and grandchildren more than I can love. So I want you to know Jesus loves you so much. He died for you. And everything he has, he has bestowed upon you. If you haven't received Jesus today, let's just pray with me. Father, I am so grateful to have the opportunity to confess that Jesus is Lord. Now, Jesus, be Lord of my life. And Father, I thank you because I believe that you raised Jesus from the dead. And the Lord of heaven's armies promised that if I confess Jesus as Lord, and if I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Now, I thank you, Father, the cycle is completed. And I thank you for the joy of the Lord that now fills my heart with my sins being gone. They're washed away. 
never to be remembered anymore. Praise God. And I welcome you into the family this first part of 2015. God bless you. Thank you.